Okay. Welcome everybody who found the room, because I almost didn't. Um, let's see where we can take this. YAML considered harmful. So, who here is a YAML engineer? Or considers himself a YAML engineer? Who likes writing YAML? Who has had bad experiences with YAML already? So few? I'm, I'm almost surprised. Um, so let's, let's see what could be the issues around YAML and where, where we might want to do something else. So obviously the title comes from the official or the original paper from Dijkstra, uh, Go to Statements Considered Harmful. And I've once been told like anybody using that title is also kind of considered harmful. So it's very meta in that regard. But let's see what are the problems around YAML and what might go wrong. So first off, why YAML? We got to YAML because, well, it's human readable and it has comments. So that excluded some other stuff. Human readable is probably against XML. I know some of you would probably say like XML is still human readable, but I'm, I'm not sure. Um, and comments is why JSON had, especially for configuration, is not really ideal because it doesn't have official comments. You could always make like fake attributes to stuff in your uh, comments, but it's not really a good solution for that. So that's why we got YAML and why we have it. Um, being white space sensitive, some people really like it. Like if you're coming from Python, you think that white space sensitivity is the only way to do programming and nobody should do anything else. And if you're coming from the Java ecosystem, you think like this is really wrong and nobody should be relying on white spaces. But this is very much a personal preference. I'm not really sure where to put this, like to say like this is wrong or this is right. I think this is mostly personal preference, so it might work for some or it might be terrible for others. But let's look at the real problems that we can have. So anybody knows if I run this and let's say like this is a Docker Compose file and I use ports here and I want to map port 80 and port 20 to the outside world. This will fail in a very unexpected way. Anybody has experienced that and knows what will happen here? Okay, so what will happen is this will fail because what the file, if you actually lint it, will give you is this one here. Because if the number is below 60, YAML assumes and it's not quoted, this is base 60. So if you have 20 colon 20, it assumes this is base 60, and this is what you get out of this. So while 80 stays correct, it will be ma mapped correctly. Port 20 will not be mapped correctly, and you just get the random port there, or not random, but like base 60 encoded, which you probably did not expect. So this is one of the things that will be very annoying to figure out. Um, you can work around that by quoting the, the string correctly, then the colon will be marked as a string correctly, but otherwise the colon with l values lower than 60 will be base 60. This one is actually pretty obvious. Um, that there are so many ways to write Boolean, truthy, or falsy values in YAML. I think in total there are 22 ways to write true or false in Boolean, and one of them is no. And that is when you have a list of countries, you might run into that. Again, the solution would be to properly quote things, but then people are like, I like YAML because I don't need all the quotes, so this is what I want to write. But then you will run into traps. Luckily here, syntax highlighting is already saving you, but this is one of the other traps that everybody runs into every now and then. Or these are also some common ones. Um, surname null. Does anybody know what will happen here? So sometimes this will be evaluated as empty, and sometimes this will really be null. So empty is kind of this tilde symbol. Um, this one is pretty obvious. You cannot have a colon in the attribute value, so this one needs to be quoted, and this one will give you a syntax uh, error. This one here is a bit trickier, because probably you didn't intend the version number to be a floating value, but that's what you actually defined here. This is not a string, this is a floating value. So sometimes it's kind of like it looks right, but it's actually not what you want it to have. Um, and then there's the obvious abuse of YAML. So when you try to uh, structure behavior instead of data in YAML, it's normally going wrong. And I don't want to bash GitLab, but they have a very nice example. So for example, they can bootstrap GitLab for CI in YAML itself. And you have 1,100 lines of YAML, which is maybe not a great pattern in the first place, because if you have a Java class which has more than 1,000 lines, you would always say, 
maybe this is not so great, but with YAML we kind of accept it again. And then if you look into the actual configuration, it's, yeah, it's YAML, but this is more or less a shell script runner. So what you get here is, here you run scripts, and then for example you get a review apps shell script. So you could run just a shell script in the first place. Basically you have the complexity of YAML just to start another shell script then. And you kind of get the worst of both worlds because you have a YAML and Bash, and you need a mix of both. And by the way, that uh, review apps shell script then is I think another 300 lines of Bash that you might throw in there. Um, so that will not be much fun to debug or build again. Also, if you're using Helm templates, um, they might look something like this. And for me, that is a major code smell already. If you need to have this like special syntax to say like this should be indented by four characters or four spaces, um, this kind of hurts to write, right? Like nobody should write YAML in uh, that fashion that you need to ha say like, hey, um, include that mychart.app and then indent that by four spaces, otherwise it will break. And this one here so should be indented by two. Um, because you can feel like here the white space uh, separation or the number of white spaces makes so much difference that you always need to keep that in mind when writing a template. So this will be a pain in the long run. Also, if you want to have a domain-specific language, just use a domain-specific language because those are pretty good by now to just write what you want in code. And then you can easily write what you have in code and you probably get proper syntax highlighting and proper error messages and just a more tailored package for what you want. So this is probably a better solution of where you want to go. Or for templating, maybe JSONnet is an interesting approach. It's pretty new. It is being done by people out of Google, but it's not an official Google project. It just happens to be done by Google people, but it's not endorsed by Google at all. But what they basically do is they take JSON, and then they add some interesting concepts around it, but they try to kind of like keep the sanity of JSON and add some features on top without getting, going fully overboard and into the madness that YAML can get sometimes because the YAML standard is also very large and has lots of features that very few people need and want. Um, bless you. So this is what you get with JSON. -ed. Or you might try to take a step back and say like, well, there are so many other markup languages. Maybe I want to use those. So just as a quick example, like, those who like XML, this is what you could do in XML. So yes, you have comments, so this is nice. But if this is really human readable and especially human editable, I'm kind of not so sure anymore because, well, it's a lot of these angular brackets and it's a lot of repetition, so maybe you don't want to write that in the first place. And then people say, like, what could we do instead? For example, we could use JSON because it's a bit nicer to type. You still have to do lots of quoting, but that's okay. Um, but here, for example, you can see we don't have comments, so I could always add a fake attribute called underscore comment. And this could be my comment-like approach here. But it's only a workaround, and it's always like an ugly hack, so people don't like that. And it has all this visual noise, like all the, uh, like so many curly braces and so many quotation marks. If you're coming from Python, you say like this looks super dirty and like noisy, and I don't want to have that. I want to have proper YAML. What could be another alternative that I want to run here? Something else that you could do, for example, is a good old ini file. Anybody still writing ini files? The very old generation, probably. Um, ini is kind of nice. You have comments. You have like nice and more or less sane structure. But what you don't have is you don't have any nesting. So in my previous examples, I had server as the parent object, and then I could have attributes within that. But there is no nesting in ini. So what you would need to do is you need to have like unique names, and then you kind of like build this kind of structure yourself by using the same naming pattern. But there is no nesting whatsoever in ini, which can get very annoying as soon as it gets a bit more complex, and you want to have more than this flat structure. Um, if you want to, you could use Toml. Anybody using Toml? It's kind of like one of the newer kids on the block, and sometimes people say, this has sanity. I'm not so sure. So it looks a bit like ini, um, but it does have nesting. So here we can say servers and service alpha, and these are the values within that. But that white space here is purely optional. This is just for human consumption. You could leave that out, and it wouldn't make any difference. Um, so some people say, like, this is nice, and others are like, no, this is confusing because it looks flat, but it isn't flat. 
but this is what you have. And you can just add comments any way you want, like you have a hashtag, and then you can add a comment after that. And you don't have to go overboard with the quoting, it's just like the necessary part. Um, or you could use JSONX, and that is trying to combine the worst parts of JSON and XML. And obviously it's coming out of IBM, <laughs> because they, they sometimes make the greatest inventions. Um, so if you want to have, or if you torture or want to torture your colleagues, this is what you could pick um, because the syntax really looks not so great. Um, okay, so since we probably cannot get out of YAML in the first place, let's try to write better YAML. Uh, one thing you might want to do is you might want to let your editors help you, and unfortunately this is very hard to see, but um, here, the intendation has different colors. So here, this would be green, and this would be pink or something like that. So here, the intendation is very clear because the editor shows you where you are. Or you could just show the dots from the spaces. So you know here we are indented by two, two dots and here by four. So you get some more visual clues to see how that is working out. Um, linters can be helpful. So for example, I could use YAML lint, and then I have a bad YAML. And it would tell me, for example, if I were use a truthy value, um, so that was the no way example that we have seen before. It would complain that I have this no and that it's confusing. So always use true or false to avoid this confusion. I didn't have a new line at the end of the file, which, okay, I, I accept that. And that mapping values that are not allowed here is that was the C colon example where I had in the value a C colon that wasn't quoted. Uh, so it would complain here. But it doesn't complain about everything. For example, this one here doesn't that YAML lint that doesn't pick up that Docker problem where you had 20 colon 20, which would be base 60, that lint didn't complain about that one. So it catches some edge cases, but probably not all of them. So it's just a starting point. Um, what I've also seen people see do is basically they have a small script to convert from JSON to YAML because YAML too complex, too many ways to make mistakes. And they just use like this one here where they read in the, uh, the JSON file, load it as JSON, and then dump it out as uh, YAML then, the YAML dump, and then you write out that file. Um, comments, you will need to simulate with something like underscore comment or so an attribute. Um, but some people say like this is the much saner approach to work with that. Um, one thing you can do, by the way, is these two here, this one here, and this one here, they're equivalent, even though they look kind of different. So the first thing is you can just indent more. So here, for example, to make the indentation clearer, I've just indented more spaces. Also here, you can just, you just need to do it um, like the same all over the file. Uh, but then you can just indent more, and it's fine. And also I've quoted more. So a lot of the problems that you run into is that you have too few qu quotes, and then some string has some magic thing in it, like a colon or the colon with 2020 that was interpreted the wrong way. So everything that is not really a numeric value, if you quote that, you will avoid a couple of issues around YAML. So this will make your life easier. So who still likes YAML? Um, Unfortunately, right now, we don't really have great alternatives, and I hope somebody comes up with a great alternative that we all want to use. Uh, but for now, we're more or less stuck a bit on YAML still. So write better YAML, let your editors help you quote as much as possible to avoid those issues. Um, we still have one minute or so left. Any questions? Or any other cool examples of YAML failing you? Yes. Yes. Um, I sometimes have the feeling nobody really cares for YAML 1.2. Uh, well, sometimes the proof of YAML is going to translate because some parts uh, don't even have a header file there to tell you. So, yeah. Um, the joy of YAML, that, that's actually a good point, and maybe I should add that to the next time, that different standards are also fun, especially if you don't have a header. Um, yeah. The 
gift that keeps on giving. Um, any other questions? Otherwise, enjoy lunch. Thanks a lot. <laughs>